One of the things we do in audiovisual design is our infrastructure specifications. And part of the infrastructure specifications is where we do conduit capacity. In other words, we're specifying how large a conduit we need for some of our cabling. Now here's the math sheet that you're going to see, and you'll see conduit capacity here, and you'll see differences here if I'm installing just one cable, two cables, or three or more cables. And the amount of the area, percentage of the area I'm allowed to fill with cable will vary depending on how many cables I'm putting in. Now one cable, according to this, I'm allowed to fill up to 53% of the area inside the conduit. Now this could be just one single cable, or it could be a multi-pair under a single jacket. Either one of those will fall under the one cable, 53% fill. If I'm doing two cables, I'm allowed a 31% fill. If I'm doing three or more, I'm allowed a 40% fill. Now, depending on where you are, your local regulations may vary a little bit. You may see numbers like 50%, 30%, 40%, but the same thing is going to hold true here. It'll be in that neighborhood. So let's go ahead and work through some examples. Let's say... I'm going to pull four loudspeaker cables, and they each have an outer diameter of 0.26 inches. What the formulas will tell me is the conduit that I need, the inner diameter of the conduit that I need, needs to be greater than what I'm going to calculate here. And you see the square root. I'm going to take the outer diameter squared of the cable. I'm going to multiply that times four, because I'm pulling four of them in the conduit. And since I'm pulling three or more, I'm allowed the 40% fill. So let's go ahead and write this out as I would put it into the calculator. I still need an outer inner diameter larger than the square root of outer diameter squared times 4 divided by the fill percentage. Let's take a look at this in the light of PEMDAS. Outer diameter squared, so it's going to do the exponent first. This is all multiplication and division, so it's going to follow it left or right, and I need to make sure everything here is completed before I take the square root. So let's go ahead and enter that. In fact, the outer diameter squared that is actually 0 0.26 squared times 4 divided by 0 0.4. So let's get all of this correct. All right, let's open it up. The square root function, I'll need to get into the second key. You see where it's open the parenthesis, 0.26 square button. I'm doing four of those, so multiply times four, and then divide by 0.4, close the paren. This tells me that I need a conduit with an inner diameter larger than 0 0.822. I'm going to take that 822 number and now compare that to some conduit sizes that would be available to me. Now you'll find these references in various books and whatnot. Well, let's take a look here. A trade size one half, the inner diameter in US customary, 0.622. Compare that to the 822, that's too small. A three quarter, 0.824. Well, actually, 0.824 is larger, so that would actually work. I needed something larger than 8.22, 8.4. 8.24 would work. So in this particular case, 0.824 larger than 0.822, so I can use the three-quarter conduit. Let's do a couple more problems here with conduit capacity. Let's say this time I'm doing a couple of coax cables, and they're each 0.405 inches outer diameter. So I'm only doing two, so my fill percentage is going to change. In this case, it's going to be 0.31, or a 31% fill. So let's go ahead and write this out as it would go into the calculator. The inner diameter of the conduit that I need needs to be larger than the square root of the outer diameter squared, so 0 0.405 squared times 2, because I'm pulling two of these, and divided by the fill percentage of 0.31. Actually, the way it, anytime you write this, 0 0.31. If you've got anything less than 1, the proper way to write that would be 0 0.31 so that people don't miss the decimal point. So now that I've written it correctly, I can enter it correctly. Let's open up the square root function. You can see it opens up the paren, 0 0.405 squared times 2 divided by 0 0.31. Close the paren. It's going to follow PEMDAS. It's going to do the exponent. And the only thing left is multiplication and division, and it will do that left to right. 
hit the enter key. 1.02, let's see, 1.02870.1029. Okay, so basically I'm looking for something a little larger than 1.03. Let's compare that to the available conduit sizes. Half inch is 0.622, too small. Three quarter, 0.824, still too small. A one here, 1.049. Ah, there we go. So 1.049 is larger than the 1.02, if you want to round that, 1.029. So we could use a conduit, trade size one in that case. Let's do one more. This time we're going to mix up the sizes a little bit. I'm going to pull one here that's 0.26 inches outer diameter, and I'm going to do two at 0.135 inches outer diameter. So here, the outer diameter of one squared plus the outer diameter of another one squared times two. And since this is three or more, my fill percentage here is 40%. So let's go ahead and write this up. Inner diameter larger than the square root of the outer diameter squared of the first one, 0 0.26 squared, plus, I'm doing two of these, 0 0.135 squared times 2, and then we're going to divide that by 0.4. Let's look at this in the light of PEMDAS. It's going to do the exponents, but, yeah, I'm going to do this multiplication. Yeah, and then it would do the division. I don't want to do the division yet. I have to add these together first. So I need a set of parens there, and then all of this needs to be done before I take the square root. So let's take another look at it. 0.135, it does the exponent, takes two of those, takes the exponent, it's going to add those together, all that's done within the paren, divide by four, all of that's done, and take the square root. Let's enter it and see what we get. Clear all that out. Let's open up the square root function, and I need another parenthesis here. So 0 0.26 squared plus 0 0.135 squared times 2, close that paren, divided by 0 0.4, and then finally close the last paren. Hit the enter key, and I need 0 0.51. Let's compare that to the chart. So I need something larger than 0 0.51. Well, 0 0.622 meets that criteria, so I can go all the way down to a trade size 1 half. So it looks like trade size 1 half will work for this. And that's how we, work, we would work some conduit capacity calculations. Let's talk about calculating for the possibility of a jam within a conduit. Now, this is in a three-cable-only scenario. If I have two cables, I don't have to worry about it. If I have four cables, I don't have to worry about it. So this is three cables and three cables only. This is going to be a two-step process anytime I have three cables. I'm going to calculate for the conduit, and then I'm going to compare that conduit size against the potential for a jam. Now, to give you an idea, if I had an inner diameter of a conduit that was exactly three units, and I had three cables, and they were exactly one unit each, outer diameter. As I pull around a bend, this is going to line up exactly. One plus one plus one equals three. So I have the potential for a jam. That's known as a 3.0 jam ratio. Now, it will vary a little bit depending on what resource you read, but generally speaking, what we want to do is avoid anything between 2.8 to 3.2. 3.0 being the perfect jam, so to allow a little room on either side, I want to avoid anything that falls between 2.8 and 3.2. So let's take an example. Let's say I'm going to do three cables here. They're all 0.275 inches outer diameter. So out inner diameter of the conduit needs to be larger than the outer diameter squared times three, and since it's three or more, my fill percentage is 40%. So let's write this out, inner diameter greater than 0 0.275 squared times 3 divided by 0 0.4. So let's see what we get with that. Open up our square root function, 0 0.275 squared times 3, 3 of those cables, 
divided by the fill percentage at 0.4 and close the paren. I need an inner diameter larger than 0 0.75311 and so forth. Let's take a look at some of our conduit specifications. So I need something larger than 0 0.753. 0 0.622 doesn't get it, but 0.824 does. So the conduit I'm going to specify, until I do another calculation here in a moment, is going to be the three-quarter conduit with an inner diameter of 0.824. So 0 0.824 larger than 0 0.75311 and so forth. So to calculate for the potential of a jam, I'm going to take the inner diameter of the conduit that I think I'm going to be able to use, and that's 0 0.824, divided by the average outer diameter of a conduit, or uh, average outer diameter of the cable that we're doing, sorry. Now, since these are all the same, the average is going to be 0.275. If I had differing diameters, I would have to add them up, divide by three to get the average outer diameter. Like I say, this one is easy. So 0.275 is the average outer diameter. Let's put this into our calculator, 0.824 divided by 0.275, 2.99, it's like 2.996. Does that fall between 2.8 to 3.2? It certainly does. So now I have a problem. I thought I was going to be able to use a three-quarter conduit. I have the potential for a jam, which is not something I want in the installation process. So what I discover is I can't use the three-quarter. I have to go one size larger, and that's what we do for jam ratio calculations.